This video will review the multiplayer options in Arvok Alliance SE. To get started, simply enter the IP address that you want to host on. You can also use this same field to enter an IP address that you want to join as a client on. You can also optionally enter the external internet IP address for the connection you're using, but that's not usually required and you can simply enter the IP address of the local network device that your computer is connected to. Then click on Connect. The next menu will let you host or join on the selected IP address. And if you're hosting, you can change the number of players in the session by clicking on the button here. And for this example, we're going to go ahead and host, so we'll click on the Host button. After loading, you'll be presented with the main multiplayer menu, and from here it will default to the cooperative campaign mode. You can use the drop-down menu at the top to select an available mission. Mission progress and selection is synchronized to the host player, so any joining players will automatically be linked to the mission that the host selects. Each player can review the briefing at their own pace, and they can also select their own ship loadout by clicking on the button here. The host has additional capabilities to select ships for AI slots in each squadron. Other human players have individual control over their own ships. The host is then in control of launching the mission when other players are ready. Other players can signal to the host that they're ready by clicking on the ready to launch button that will appear on the lower right corner where the launch button is for the host. And once launched, the mission begins for all connected players. The mission time clock will not advance until all players have finished loading and are in the game. For squadron pilot assignments that do not have a human player, an AI pilot will fill in to meet the conditions specified by the mission. For cooperative campaign missions, the host is in control of when all ships, both human and AI controlled, jump to the next waypoint. It's strongly recommended that the host wait until all ships are in formation and facing in the correct direction before making the jump to the next waypoint. Then once the host engages the jump drive, all connected ships in formation will jump with them. The host is also in control of when the jump cycle ends, and the mission can begin once all ships decelerate from jump speed. Any individual player can complete the main objective for a campaign mission, and it's a good idea to strategize which player will complete the objective while others may defend or perform other actions during the course of a mission. In some missions, all players might be involved in combat, while in others one might build while the others defend, or one might perform a rescue or mining operation while the others provide cover. The next multiplayer gameplay mode is Dogfight. This mode puts every ship against every other ship. The host can limit it to human-only players, or they can add AI ships to include more in the battle. In any non-cooperative campaign mode, the host can limit the duration of the battle by time using the menu here, or by a kill limit using the menu here. And in this menu, the host can also select None or No Respawn. The None option will allow all players to respawn immediately back into the game. The No Respawn option will give each player only one life in the battle, and selecting a numerical value will end the battle once one player reaches the limit selected by the host. The host can also select an environment for the battle to take place in with the menu here. The next menu lets the host select how many AI ships to include in the battle. When set to off, only human players will be in the battle, and then any other selection will add AI ships up to the limit selected. The list of the ships selected for the battle appears below. Human players will have their call sign displayed next to their ship, while AI-controlled ships will simply have AI ship listed as their name. The host can optionally click on a ship icon next to one of the AI indexes to change the assigned ship. The host can also click on the menu option here to select a light, medium, or heavy category of ships to use for the battle. Selecting one of the options from the menu will assign ships randomly in that category to each AI index. Once in the dogfight mode, you can see how all ships are hostile to each other, and the battle will continue until there's only one ship left or a time or kill limit is reached. The next mode is Squadrons, which is a team versus team scenario. All of the same options and settings that are available in the dogfight mode are also available in the Squadrons mode. Each ship is simply assigned to a team, and each team has its own base for refueling, repairing, and rearming. The host can change a team assigned to a ship by simply clicking on its team number next to its name. Each individual human player can also select their own team. So using both the ship and team selection options, the host can change the odds and difficulty of a battle. In the middle menu are icons for each ship and team base in the battle. The host can click on the distance option here in the middle to change the spacing between each team. Left clicking will increase the distance value while right clicking will decrease it. Or the host can use the left and right arrows to adjust the value. The spacing button will increase or decrease the starting distance between each ship on each team. 
the distance and spacing parameters can be particularly useful for specific environments. And once in the game, you can see how hostile ships are red and allied ships are green. And the battle begins as each ship enters weapon range. Ending when a selected time or kill limit is reached, or if the host decides to end the battle by pressing and holding the escape key. The strike mode, available here, is also a team versus team mode, but it adds two capital ships to the battlefield, one for each team. The capital ships take up AI indexes 23 and 24, so the player limit for this mode is 22. The objective is to destroy the opposing team's capital ship, and the first team to do that wins the battle. Each team's capital ship is placed near their respective base. So the host can increase or decrease the spacing between the capital ships by adjusting the distance setting in the multiplayer configuration menu. The capital ships will fire beam cannons and torpedoes at each other, but the only way to inflict significant damage is with a small ship attack. AI ships will focus on attacking the opposing team's small ships, leaving the task of destroying the capital ship up to human players. Battle limitation settings can also apply for added time pressure and challenge. The next two modes are player versus player only, so they exclude AI ships and only involve human pilots. The next mode is sphere capture. This scenario requires each team to capture a sphere from inside the opposing team's base and return it to their own base. To retrieve and carry a sphere, a player simply needs to make contact with it. And once the sphere is locked onto a player, they can carry it back to their own base. Then, in order to score a point, that player's own team sphere needs to be inside their base. If it's not there when the player returns with the opposing team sphere, they'll have to destroy the other player that's carrying their own team sphere before they can score a point. This mode generally works well with the time limit, giving each team a fixed duration to score as many points as they can. The next mode is base capture. This scenario requires each team to capture the opposing team's base by remaining inside it long enough to deplete the control bar at the top. So each team will need to balance defending their own base with capturing the opposing team's base. As a base is being captured, its indicator bar at the top will decrease in length. Once it disappears, the base is captured. If one or more ships capturing a base are destroyed, then the bar will gradually increase in size, restoring its required capture time. Lastly, we'll review the available environments, starting with asteroids. Choosing this option will place an asteroid field in the middle of the battle. Players can use the asteroids for cover from cannon fire and for missile evasion. The Nebula Cloud option obscures visibility and decreases radar range by 50%. This reduces the required engagement and detection range, making it more difficult to track enemy ships at greater distances. The Energy Cloud environment is similar to the Nebula Cloud in that it decreases detection range by 50%, but it also has electromagnetic interference that prevents secondary weapon locks and jump drives. As a result, it provides a scenario that requires engaging with cannons only. The near star environment places the battle inside the gravity field of a nearby star. This results in a constant gravitational pull, which can make various docking and combat maneuvers a little more difficult. Players can fly closer to the star for higher gravity or away from it for less of a gravitational effect. The atmosphere environment places the battle next to a planet, very close to the edge of its atmosphere. Players can optionally fly into the atmosphere for its effect on restricting speed and agility or they can also fly closer to its surface for battles that take place closer to terrain. The cave environment is a player versus player only scenario. It places players and their optional bases inside an unlit cave network. It significantly restricts the range of movement and speed, so it can be an ideal scenario for players looking for a close range slugfest. For modes that provide bases, players can fly inside and park within the circle of lights in the middle. Once they come to a complete stop, the base will repair, refuel, and rearm them. Whatever secondary weapons they originally had on their ship will be restored. Their ship will also continue to be refueled and hull damage repaired for as long as they remain in the base. The player can leave at any time before repairs, refueling, and rearming is complete to return to the battle. That's all for this video. Visit StarWraith.com for more, and be sure to check out the strategy guide on the game's official website. Link in the description below.